So let's look at an example now where we try to get our power series. We have to actually combine two power series back to get what we want. So let's try f of x to 1 over x times x plus 1. And I'm going to center it at x equal to 1. So somehow we've got to figure out how to get x minus 1 into the picture. So the way we'll do that is we don't want to deal with this x squared plus x in the bottom. We want to use partial fractions to pull that apart to get it into linear terms. And then we can use our last trick. So let's take a look. So we set up our partial fractions. So we're going to take each factor, give it its own component, and then we'll put a constant on top of those to be solved in a second. So to solve for that, we're going to clear the denominator out. And then we're going to target each 0 for each piece in the bottom. So when I do that, if I let x be equal to minus 1, the a goes away, leaving with b equal to minus 1. If I target the b term here, I'm going to let x be equal to 0, and then that's going to leave me with a equal to 1. So I can rewrite this as 1 over x, 1 over x plus 1. So remember our trick. If I want to put the center at 1, wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with x minus 1 plus 1. So x is going to turn into that. 1 over x plus 1, well, I put in our x minus 1 plus 1. So the other 1 is going to combine to give me a 2. And then we know the way we deal with this is we're going to turn them both into 1 over 1 minus box. So that's going to be the first one. Second one, we're going to pull the half out. And then I get 1 over 1 minus box as so. And then we're just going to add up two power series. And so we're allowed to do that if we do it term by term. So the way we deal with series, all you're going to do is match up your powers of x if you want to combine things, or in this case, powers of x minus 1. Okay, so we're going to get our first one like this. That's just going to be your usual 1 plus box plus box squared plus box cubed, and the same for the bottom. So I can combine these, so I just keep track of what's going with who. So the 1 goes with the minus a half to give me a half. Then we have minus x minus 1, but that's going to have on it plus a quarter, so I'll get minus 3 quarters. Then on this x squared, there's a 1, and then we have to take that 1 half, hit it with a quarter, that's 1 eighth, but we're subtracting. So that's going to give me 1 minus an eighth, gives me 7 eighths, and so on. So you can keep playing that game. So anyway, at the end of the day, this is going to be my series associated to this guy. And note, we could put this in closed form if we wanted, but that's good enough for here. OK, next example. So I sold this whole business of series and power series based on the fact that what series will let us do is approximate functions at values. So here's going to be a big one. We're going to approximate pi. So where do we start? We're going to start with unlikely place. We know that inverse tangent, if I take its derivative, is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So if you notice, this looks like this geometric series trick we've been using with r equal to minus x squared. So I can rewrite this as 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x sixth, and so on. The only catch is, if I do this, then I'm throwing away everything except for the points between minus 1 and 1, because that's the only region where our power series is going to be defined. But that's going to be OK for what I need to work with. OK, these are equal. I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides, and then we'll see what comes out they'll both be equal on the other side. So taking the antiderivative of a derivative, they cancel, leaving me with tan inverse of x. Taking the antiderivative of this side, we're just going to constant of integration. And then the rule is add 1 and flip it over. OK, for the 1, we just turn that into x. And then add 1, flip it over. x cubed over 3, x to the fifth over 5, x to the seventh over 7. And then you put your signs in with the same pattern. So I almost have tan inverse of x as a power series. We just need to get rid of c. So that means knowing tan inverse at one point. Well, we know that the tangent of 0 is equal to 0. So tan inverse is gotten by just reversing the order. So for tangent, tangent takes an angle, returns a number. Tan inverse takes a number, returns an angle. In this case, they're both going to be 0. But for tan inverse, it's going to be tan inverse a number as 0 returns angle as 0. OK, point of that is c is equal to 0. So now I've got an expression for tan inverse. 
okay, as a power series. Now what I want to do though is I want to use one of the endpoints, but we don't have them yet. So I just have to do one little explanation and then we're on our way. Now, tan inverse of x, that's defined on the entire real line. And in fact, it's continuous in its whole region. The graph looks just like this. This thing here is also going to be continuous in the region, but we're only defined minus one to one. So its region's minus one to one. It's going to be continuous on that region. If I can make sense of this at the endpoints, continuity is going to let me extend the value of the function to the endpoint. So let's see. I want to get one into the domain of this. So if I put a one into here, just this power series, you'll note that we have an alternating series, and all the rules for the alternating series test are going to apply. So that means what I really have here is I can put the equality in, because it's going to make sense when I put a one in. Okay, if you try to put the minus one in, you're going to get something that's divergent. So we won't try that. Now, I'm going to take tan inverse of 1, which I just argued is perfectly fine to look at. Okay, well, what angle is going to give you 1 as the tangent? Well, that's going to be where sine equals cosine, so that's going to be pi over 4. So pi over 4 is going to be equal to tan inverse of 1. I put this in the series, and we see that that's going to be equal to 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh, and so on. So if I move the 4 to the other side, I've got an expression for pi. Only catch is it converges very slowly. So if you were to take the first 101 terms, okay, I went to the computer and did this, we get 3.151493, whatever. Okay, notice if I have 100 terms, I'm not even getting my 100th place in my expression for pi. So it's great that we even have an expression at all, but it gets there very slowly. 